What's going on guys? Another day, another RB video. It's a beautiful morning out here at HQ. The temperature at the moment is just awesome. But uh, still, it's a little bit too cold to go playing with the gurney and the block at this time of the morning. So what I will do first is uh, show you guys how to gap your rings properly. Um, even though I'm not too worried about the ring gap because I'm going to be using the same rings that actually came out of this block, that I came out of the bores. So if it weren't for uh, just wanting to show you guys basically how to do it or what to look for, um, I would literally just put them on the pistons and throw them in. But I will go through and just give you a quick rundown on, on how to gap your rings properly. And um, then we'll look at starting to clean up this block. So probably another whole day of cleaning, I reckon. <laughs> Maybe not, but ridiculous amounts of cleaning. So all I'm doing here, guys, is just prepping all the block surfaces, getting rid of any old gaskets, uh, and just basically cleaning up all, all of the mating surfaces on the block. You don't want any leftover gasket or any, any crap left on the block, and it's usually best practice to do this before you start cleaning it. All you're really looking to do is get all the bigger stuff off. All of these surfaces will be prepped again before anything is actually mounted to the block anyway. But it's still good to get all of the crap off before you go smashing it with the gurney. Alright guys, so I sort of changed my mind in the process to how I'm going to do stuff. Uh, basically I was looking to cut a few corners with this engine just because as you saw when I pulled it down I really don't believe it was put together too long ago. And uh, for that reason I believe the ring gap and everything I think it's all going to be fine. So I had planned to just cut a few corners and then sort of make videos on how you should be doing things. But there is a certain process um, and an order that things have to happen. For example I wanted to show you how to gap your rings. But in order to gap your rings, you have to have already really done your honing of your cylinders because your honing will change them minusculely, especially with this because I don't need to hone very much. Um, but I just want to give it a quick hone just to get rid of some marks on the bore. Um, so reality is your rings, you really need to do your ring gap after you've honed and you can't, <laughs> you should be honing after you wash out the block. Um, so yeah, basically I need, to, I need to sort this block out first and then I'll show you how to hone it and then I'll probably teach you all about rings and ring gap in the next episode because that is the process that it needs to happen in in reality. So there's just a few, like they're not even, it's gonna be a very light hone on this. There's just a few little marks on the ball, um, little water marks and stuff that I just wanna get off, but nothing crazy. Nothing that I, um, is gonna affect my ring gap at all. As I said, I really, if it weren't for me making videos, I'd literally just chuck the rings back in. I wouldn't worry about it, but that's not what we're about. So yeah, we'll uh, work on getting this ball washed, which sucks because it's still really cold. But anyway, what do you do? So what we're doing here is just giving the block a really good wash down and a good degrease, try and get everything, everything out of it. You're really looking to try and clean out the water jackets as best you can. You want to get all of that real crusty, corroded um, build up out of the block. Obviously this is why it's really good to get your blocks acid washed from a machine shop. Unfortunately, I don't have that sort of facilities and uh, with this RB30, very simple RB30, it's not something I'm about to go and do. So you really just want to get right in there with the gurney and get all that stuff out. After you've gurned it out, it's a really good idea to give it a really good blowout. Try and get uh, all of the water out. Make sure you haven't forced any bits of crud into places where it shouldn't be. Uh, obviously, with a gurney, you can actually force bad stuff into passages where it will block stuff up, and you really need to make sure that you haven't left these blocks. So it's good to give it a really good blowout. Make sure you try and get all of that crud out of it, and you know, get it really nice and clean for assembly. Alright, so as you can see, it's a very time-consuming job. <laughs> but uh, basically, from here, after I've blown everything down, um, it's really important for you to blow everything down because as much as you're cleaning the block with, uh, obviously, high-pressure water, you also have a tendency to push stuff in the places that it shouldn't be. So it's very important to blow it out and make sure that you get all of your water passages and oil passages uh, clear and make sure there's nothing stuck in there that shouldn't be stuck in there. Um, so from here, basically, I'm going to go have another coffee. <laughs> copy time again from here I'll just get some brake clean you can see how fast um, water especially here the water here is has a lot of mineral in it there's a lot of mineral content um, I think it's just because of where we are but uh, you can see how quickly it actually 
starts to show on these bores, like on bare metal. So all I do from here is um, just get some brake clean, give the whole block a nice good hit with some brake clean, uh, get like a chucks, like a lint-free wipe or something with some brake clean and just really give these bores a good clean with some brake clean. And um, I might actually do this before I go for my coffee. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'll leave that at the moment. I'm just looking, I think I might paint this block up a bit and pretty it up a bit. I think it'd benefit pretty well from it. It's, uh, it's a bit sad. <laughs> It's not the prettiest. Alrighty, so you can clean them up so you can see the sort of the little bits that you want to get rid of with the hone. Um, just a few little things that I want to clean up. But overall, I mean, these balls aren't too bad at all. I did notice though, while I was cleaning out, that thread has popped its real ugly head again. So if you can remember, there was, it looked like on the crank, on I think it might have been counterweight on number five. It looked like an M6 thread. And somehow, it's, uh, there's something buried into the, the head there. So I don't know how that must have happened. I feel like that could only happen if someone messed up and accidentally off the bolt there when they tried to tighten the head down. But that just is weird. Very strange. Nothing I've ever seen before, but whatever. Should be right. All right, so I'm gonna go have a coffee and I'll uh, come up and uh, hone these balls. All right, so I was making my coffee, I decided I'd paint the block. It's um, it's not hard, it's not a lot of work and it really goes a long way prettying it up a bit. And it's definitely the best time to do it while um, before you prep any of your services. So all I do here is grab an old head gasket and chuck it on, just mask it, tape it up um, and just cover all your oil feeds and all your, your thread bolt, uh, your head bolt holes. Um, the rest of it doesn't really matter, obviously. Bores, you got to worry about to bone any, uh, hone anyway, and um, actually this uh, surface will be prepped again before the head goes on anyway. Uh, apart from that, just chuck bungs in all the water and oil galleries or whatever. Um, just mask up anything you don't want paint on the threads. Uh, some people go crazy with it. I just uh, chuck on an old oil filter as well, just so you don't get paint in there. Some people go crazy and we'll, we'll fit the old oil pump and that paint all this up, but um, all of this is covered by the, the timing and, and that anyway. Uh, like when it comes to painting up a motor, it doesn't have to be perfect because most of it's covered, but you just want it to look pretty nice if someone pokes the head in there under the under the bonnet. So there. Yeah. So anyway, I'll give it a paint up. I think it's going to be. I think I'll be thanking myself later if I paint it now. So. Alright, so very glad I painted that up. It's going to look so much better now. So now it's time to hone these bores. So basically you've got your little three-legged uh, hone tool here, three stones. Uh, now if you look down the bore, you see about three quarters of the way down there where it changes from shiny to that sort of dull, duller area. That's obviously how far the piston gets down the bore. So there's no need really to hone any further than that line. And obviously the issue is if you try and go too deep with the hone, you'll end up hitting the main, um, the main uh, journal there, and obviously it can break stones like some idiot has done here. <laughs> so that's no good. Obviously, it's not ideal, but I don't have any more stones for this, so I'm just going to use it. But all I want to do is um, get rid of. You can see it's probably hard to see in the light. I'll get a torch and see if that helps. So you can see like marks like that, that's the sort of stuff you want to be getting rid of. This is only going to need a very, very light hone. So basically just make sure your bores are all cleaned, clean them with some brake clean, prepped and cleaned. Uh, then you pretty much just want to lube up these stones. I just use a bit of WD-40, just spray some in the bore, lube up the stones. And then you want to set your drill on the lowest speed setting you can. And just in and out nice and slow, trying to get that sort of 45 degree cross hatch is all you want. So low speed, quick spray in the bores with some CRC. Now you don't want to have it too tight, you don't want to be pushing on the bores too hard, you just want a bit of a light push, so you don't want it tension down too hard here. Anyway, you just sort of go up, down, up, down. Careful not to go too deep. 
just to get that 45 degree cross hatch. I generally like to just go one, oop, a bit too far out there. Two, one, two, one. And that's all you want. All you really want to do, and it just gets all those little marks, any little bits of, uh, of crap that shouldn't be there, just gets them off the ball, cleans it up nice. Which is what you want for putting together a nice clean engine. So that's all you're looking to do. As I said, I was pretty happy with these balls to start with, so I only gave them a very light hone. But you're just looking to take the shiny edges off and just try and get that cross hatch all the way around, like so. And you can see it's gotten rid of all those all those marks and stuff I didn't want in there. And uh, so that's all good. Those balls are going to be fine now. So basically, this will affect your ring gap very little, especially how much I'm honing it will probably affect it almost none. But by rule, obviously, you want to have your hone done before you do your ring gap, so that's why I had to do this first. <laughs> so anyway, all I'll do now is uh, basically get some brake clean and re-clean these balls with some brake clean, make sure they're nice and clean. So uh, then I'll get on to ring gap, so that's all I'll put in this episode. So keep tuned for uh, the next one, and we'll start doing rings and ring gap and uh, start getting this bottom end back together.